Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video to Studio, and today I'm gonna show you how to create that corporate slideshow effect in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now, we're on the edit page, and I'm gonna start by bringing a new Fusion composition in my timeline. So I'm gonna just drag that in, and then we're gonna move over to Fusion. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is here bringing a new background in my working area and link it the output of that background to the media out. Then we're gonna bring the alpha channel down to zero to gain transparency and basically setting up our canvas. Then I'm gonna bring all footage here in the working area and link it to the background. I'm just bringing the footage in right now so we can see what we're doing, but we're gonna delete it down the line so we can simply use this fusion composition as an overlay and have all footage right below it so we can use it both as a title and a transition. Anyway, that will make sense at the end of the video. Let's just go back to Fusion. Now I'm gonna bring a new background and link the output of that background to our Merge 2. And then here I'm gonna unzoom from our viewer at 50% so we can see what we're doing. And we're gonna take the Polygon tool and draw our first shape. So we're gonna draw outside of the viewer. We're gonna drop a first point, a second one, a third one a bit further down the line. And then here we're just gonna draw this one a bit diagonally and link that to our first point. Now you can reposition those lines to get really the angle that you want. Sometimes you might want to have something that is very strong, sometimes something that is a bit more discreet. It will depend on how much paragraph and how much text you need to have on your left side. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it like that. I think it's fine. Right now, Polygon has been attached to the merge. We don't want that. We're just gonna unlink it and we're gonna link it to the background instead. Now we're gonna change here the color from the background from black to white and as you can see we've created our first shape if we're moving the shape around as you can see once we'll animated it that will serve as our transition we're simply gonna create three of those and offset them a little bit just to have an interesting edge right there so right now the first one that we've created the white is going to be the one at the front we're just going to create a second one at the back and then a third one at the back again so let's just make a bit of space right there adjust the position to wherever we want it to be and then here I'm just going to select my polygon and my background, copy them, and then paste them. Then I'm going to link the output of that second background to the merge two. And now we're going to go over to background and we're going to switch from solid color to gradient. And right now I'm going to go with a blue gradient, selecting the first color being blue and then selecting the second color being cyan. Now let's just move the position of the polygon. It's important that we do it before or white because otherwise it will just be in front. For example, here, if I were to bring it at the front, the blue will be at the top. So that's not what we want. We want to have the blue in the background and the white at the top. Now let's make a quick adjustment to our gradient by going over to the background. And then here we're gonna adjust the position of that gradient. We're gonna bring the blue up there and the cyan down there. Just gonna make it look a tiny bit more interesting. All right, good, now let's make our third bar, which is gonna be a glass morphism effect. First, I'm just gonna zoom to fit so we can see a bit more what we're doing. Then here, I'm gonna copy my polygon and background again and paste them. Now we can link the output to the merge two, go to the polygon and then move the position again. So here we're gonna try to have a similar amount of distance than the blue one, just to keep them equal. Then I'm gonna go over to background. I'm gonna switch here to gradient and I'm gonna bring my white point at the top and I'm gonna then bring the black point at the bottom. Now let's just switch the black point to something more towards gray. And we're gonna bring the alpha to 0.2 and the same for the white, we're gonna bring the alpha to 0.2. Now right now we have some transparency but we still don't have a glass morphism effect. To do that, we're gonna go over to merge two, we're gonna hit shift space on our keyboard and we're gonna search for a Gaussian blur. Bring that in and then link the output of our polygon to the Gaussian blur. Then here I'm just gonna select everything, make some space, select my Gaussian blur, hit shift space on our keyboard and here I'm gonna search for transform, bring that in, link the output of the polygon again to the transform and then we're gonna raise the size a tiny bit, maybe to 1.1 or 1.2 just to give a bit of deformation. Then with the transform selected, we're gonna hit shift space on our keyboard again and we're gonna search for a glow node and bring that in and we're gonna again link the output of that mask to the glow. Then I'm gonna go over to the background, hit shift space on our keyboard and we're gonna bring a drop shadow and bring that in. 
Now we're gonna bring the shadow strength up to the maximum and then we're gonna go back to the glow and we're gonna reduce the glow quite a bit because as you can see here, uh, it's clipping completely the white on the shirt of our subject. So I'm just gonna reduce that until it's not clipping anymore. If you want, I have a full video explaining how that glass morphism effect is working. I will link it in the description below. Now we're gonna select this background and we're gonna bring a drop shadow as well. So we're gonna shift space on our keyboard and bring a drop shadow in. And then same thing here for the second background, hit shift space on the keyboard and bring a drop shadow in. Those drop shadows, as you can see, help us create more depths between each layer and really make it look that they are on top of each other. Now that we've created our solid, let's just animate them. So we're gonna make an animation on 16 frame. I'm gonna start with our first polygon, the white one right there. We're gonna drop a keyframe here on the position and then we're gonna go at frame zero and bring it outside of the frame until we don't see it anymore. Now I'm just gonna copy that value because we're gonna reuse it for the two other solid. Let's move to the second polygon, the blue polygon. This time we're gonna go at frame 17 we just want to have a tiny bit of delay between the two so we have a very short offset between each layer just so they don't arrive at the same time and it looks nicer i'm gonna drop here a keyframe on the center position and then we're gonna go at frame one again because we want to have a tiny bit of delay and then here i'm gonna paste the value that we copy from the white solid then we're gonna repeat the same process for the glass solid. Let's just go to the last polygon. And then here we're gonna go at frame 18, drop a keyframe on the center position, then go to frame two. And then here, copy the value that we paste from the white solid. Now let's go over to the spline editor. As you can see, we have all, all polygon. Let's just click zoom to fit. And then here, just select all the point that we've created. Hit S on your keyboard to just smooth that out. Then hit T to bring the ease in and ease out. And then we're gonna adjust the curve by bringing the ease in to 85. And now for play it, we got our solid moving that's gonna serve us as a transition. Now let's just move on to creating the text. So to do that, I'm gonna just make some space here between my merge and my media out. And I'm gonna start by bringing a first text node right in then link the output of that text to my merge two to bring it to the main composition. And here we're gonna write all first line. In our case, let's just write corporate, enter slideshow. We're gonna change the font for popping. And then here we're gonna change the color for black, but not exactly black, more of a gray. It usually look a bit nicer in my opinion. Then here we're gonna put the V anchor to the top and we're gonna put the H anchor to the left. Now let's move that around. Let's reduce a tiny bit the line spacing and bring that down a little bit more. Now let's bring our second text, link the output of that text to our merge too. And then here, write whatever longer paragraph text that we want. So in our case, I'm just gonna write the description of this tutorial. I'm gonna change the font for pop-in once again, but this time we're gonna put it as regular. I'm gonna go back to my text one just to check the color that we selected prior. So here, that's just 222. Let's just copy that. And then we're gonna use the exact same color here on the text too. So paste it. We're gonna also anchor the V anchor to the top and then the H anchor to the left and reduce the line spacing a little bit as well. Then let's just bring that in. Now we need to, to bring that text size down considerably. So let's just do that. Here, I'm gonna readjust the line spacing. And now you can just play around with the spacing within your text box, just so the text is just lined up properly with each other. Me, I'm just gonna make some modification to the writing in the text because I would like it to feel a tiny bit more the frame. All right, good. But by making my modification right now, I've realized that that didn't anchor it to the top, but I've done it to the bottom. So let's just switch that. So it's to avoid that now, if you were to add some text, as you can see, the text isn't moving uh, to the top because we've anchored it to the top. Right now, right before, I've just anchored it to the bottom, meaning that now if I'm adding some line, as you can see, the text is moving and it's just destroying the design. So we want to avoid that. It's similar to the anchor left. Now, if we add, you know, uh, any text, the paragraph is not displaced because it's not framed in the center. It's just adding the text only to the right side. Right now, let's just adjust the spacing a little bit. I'm then gonna bring a new background in my working area, link the output of that background to the merge, and then here, select the background and bring a rectangular mask. We're gonna bring the corner radius up to the maximum, and then adjust the height to reduce it to make it just a small line. Let's just reduce the width as well. 
and adjust the position. Here I'm just gonna put it right above my paragraph. I'm gonna go over to my background, then switch from solid color to gradient, and we're gonna use the same gradient that we've used uh, for our solid. So I'm gonna go and switch the black here to blue, and then I'm gonna switch the white to cyan. Now we're going to adjust the position of the gradient point. Good, I'm happy with that. And now let's just adjust the position of our first text. So we have an equal amount of space between the two. Now I'm realizing that this text is a bit too thin compared to our header. So I'm just going to switch here from popping a regular to medium, just to make it a bit thicker and make it a bit more consistent in my opinion. Now, for example, we could add the logo of the company right at the top. So let's just bring the DaVinci Resolve logo. So I'm just going to take it and drag it here in our working area and then link the output to our merge. Now we can select the media and then it's just space on our keyboard, search for transform and bring a transform node in and we can adjust the size and position. And now we're done with the layout. Let's get on with the text animation. Let's start with our text one by selecting it and bringing a rectangular mask. Then we're just going to frame that mask around the text by reducing it and then bringing it in frame properly like so. All right, let's just select our text one, then right click on the text box and select follower, then go to the modifier. And then here we're gonna switch from between each character to between first and last character. And we're gonna put the delay at five. Then we're gonna go over to shading, go to frame 22 and scroll down, drop a keyframe on the offset at zero. It prompt open another window, but we don't care about that. Let's go back to the follower and go to frame six, scroll down again, and then bring the offset outside of the mask. So it's basically the position of the text. If we play it, let's just create a simple animation. We're simply gonna do one last thing by going here uh, midway when the text is getting out and we're gonna go over to our rectangular mask and we're gonna adjust the soft edge by increasing it a little bit just so it's not so harsh when it get out of the mask. Then we can go over to our spline and now we have a bunch of points placed and trying to identify which one you want. Uh, an easy trick is simply here to go and select show only selected tool. Now only the node that is selected will appear in your spline editor. So then you can just select your point, hit S on your keyboard, and then adjust the easing to 85. And now we have a smooth animation for the header. Now let's make an animation for the line. To do that, we're simply gonna make an animation on the width. So I'm gonna go at frame 22, and I'm gonna drop a keyframe here on the width, and then I'm gonna go at frame eight, and I'm gonna bring the width down to zero. Now I'm gonna click zoom to fit because I have more rectangle selected. I have only the rectangle appearing. I'm gonna select my point, hit S on the keyboard, and then adjust the easing to 85. Now let's make the animation for the paragraph text. I'm gonna go over to text two, and I'm gonna select my ellipse mask. Then I'm gonna increase the soft edge a little bit, just so it's not so harsh on the text, and we have a nice feathering. I'm then gonna go to frame 28, and I'm gonna bring the mask over to the text, then drop a keyframe on the position, and then we're gonna go add frame 10. Then here, I'm gonna drag the mask out, so it's just uncovering the text. Now let's click zoom to fit once more, and select all all point, hit S, bring the ease in to 85. And the last one to animate is our DaVinci Resolve logo. So we're gonna go over to transform. And for this one, I'm gonna go to frame 15 and I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the size. And then I'm gonna go over to frame six and I'm gonna bring the size down to zero. Then same here, I'm gonna select my point, hit S on the keyboard and bring the easing up to 85. All right, so now we have our final animation. Let's see together how to use it properly. So here, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we're gonna delete that media in because we just used it as an example. Because I want to be able to drop that above any clip in my edit page and make it work. As for now, right now, as you can see, if I try to drag it above this clip right here, there is nothing happening. It's still the clip that we have in Fusion. So let's modify that quickly. So now we can drop it on any clip. Just one quick disclaimer by doing this technique in the edit page, uh, you will lose some of the effect of uh, the glass morphism uh, because you need to have the input from the polygon 
in the Fusion page. I just wanted to share that with you. So if you're intimidated at the idea of creating an entire slideshow in the Fusion page, you can do that in the Edit page. But there is some effect like this one that you will not be able to do. It's just a trade-off. So if you want that blurry glass effect, you will need to uh, do everything within Fusion. So now we're simply gonna go back to the Fusion page and delete the media that we use as a placeholder. Now, as you can see, we have transparency instead. So when we play it, we have the transparency, meaning that now we can just put it over any of our footage. So now let's just place that right above some footage. So I have my Fusion composition right here. Let's bring that clip right below it and I can just easily play it. That's just a few tips on how to use it as a transition. For example, here, let's just make a cut to our clip and let's bring another clip right in. And we want to have a second slideshow coming in and basically transitioning between the first one and the second one. We can do that very easily. We can just select our fusion composition and then holding option or alt on our keyboard and then drag that on track number three and bringing that right at the beginning of the clip. And as you can see, if we play frame by frame, we start to have the solid coming into frame and here the switch is happening. So we're simply gonna adjust it so the solid is covering entirely the frame. And now if we play it, it's acting as a transition from one clip to another. Obviously it doesn't look too much like it because it's the same text. So quickly you can adjust the text by going to your Fusion composition, going back over to Fusion. Then you can just open here the clips, right clicking on your clips, create a new composition, now you can make any adjustment that you want to your text. Now like that, we made a few modification. We can easily go back to the edit page and play it. And as you can see, now we have a difference between each one of them and you can basically line them up and create a slideshow. Now you can also play around and instead of having the solid coming from the right side, you can have them coming from the left side, from the top, from the bottom, etc. to have a bit of diversity and then basically using them one after another to create a slideshow like this one. Another tip to try to make it a bit more dynamic, here I'm gonna adjust the position of my clip and move that a bit more to the right so my character is in frame properly. And then here we could apply a dynamic zoom. Click on the dynamic zoom, then going over here to the viewer option, select dynamic zoom, make the zoom adjustment that you want. In our case, trim the excess so we can actually see the zoom properly and then you can just play it. All right, and that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know in a comment what kind of video you would like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.